Hey guys, what's up? It's Chad Close here with Close Blender and CD Gaming. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a graphics user interface in Unity 3D, also known as the GUI. Uh, one thing to note, uh, check out our games that we're making on the Android market. Uh, CD Gaming, our newest one is Spheric. There will be a link in the description. Make sure you go check that out. Alright, so this is kind of just the basic what we're going to get. Um, we are just going to create a menu that can scroll. So pretty cool here, and then over here, you can just see that it whatever you click, it just it'll read out. So you could have a picture of the item or whatever, and the stats and buying it and whatnot over there. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to work and show you how I did this part right here. One thing to note, uh, one, how I wrote this, it's based on your screen resolution. So if it's smaller you can see the buttons shifted over and if I make it a little bigger or I guess I have to go even smaller uh, you can see it it adjusts so pretty pretty cool um, let's just kinda jump over in the script just the layout of it um, as you can see we have our background which I'll just play and kinda show you this the background is just this doll the, the, the gray in the background um, and then I have the cover, which is the over it. So the outline of this, the it's got gray around it too, I think. And this uh, this siding or edging right here. I just quickly made these out in Photoshop, nothing special. And then we have our button texture right here. And then also our menu item cover, which is which holds every single item. So this gray box right here. So those are just right here. And as you can see, I have I'm using a text that I got from Defont, and I just made a style called Item Wording, and I've got the alignment to middle center, so it's in the middle and the center of these buttons, which is pretty important. And then I have a variable called Selected, which is just holding the variable whatever I have selected. Now I have an array for all the item themes uh, and items. I have 30 of them. I just named them one through 30 nothing creative but I'm just proving showing how to do this so let's get into the coding of it shall we let's go ahead and open up Unisite I'll minimize some of these alright so as you can see I have quite a bit of variables okay not really it's about 15 variables so here we have our textures we're just clearing them bar background colon texture and then down here we have width and height ratio now you don't have to do this now I just put this in here just as an added feature this is for say if you're on using making games for an Android or something like that not every resolution is the same so if you want flexible GUI systems you're gonna want to put in some ratio ratio system uh, or something similar um, now these variables are for moving the button so we have the where the buttons Y and X position is whether or not it's moving and then old Y and old button are holding variables such as the old Y is where you click the mouse when you click the scroll button and old button is where you're holding the old button spot I'll get into these variables when we actually start using them for these these are the items so we have the X items of the top of the list, the item Y top of the top of the list corner, and then we have our item strings and then our style. And then down here we just have our selected variable. Pretty simple. Let's go down into the start function. Right here we're just going to declare our ratios, which is going to be the width ratio, which is the screen width. If you put this right here, screen width width is an int integer, and we want this to be a float. So if you put this right here, it'll round it, and it'll round it to 0 or 1, and it won't come out to the number you want. So you got to first declare width ratio, and then do it again. It's weird. I'm going based off a resolution of 1280, 720. That's kind of my, my uh, template that I worked with. And then here we're setting our starting button positions, which is just 6406. If I'm in this resolution, that would be where the top left hand corner is in my thing so right here would be 406 oh, 60 um, and then I just times them by the ratio so I can get them in the correct spot based on the screen resolution 
Same thing with the, sorry, same thing with the item positions, 66 height ratio with, width ratio. All right, down here in our update function, it's pretty simple. We're just have a, calling a function called scroll button move, which moves the button if you scroll it, and scroll items. So let's just skip those for now and down to the GUI. So now in on GUI, so anything you put in here will display on the GUI. We have our background using a draw texture, and then we're just stretch to fill, and then we're stretching just the screen width and the screen height. Uh, next, we're just going to skip this for right now. Next, we have the overlap. So this is going to be overlapping everything, and it's going to hide our list that you're, you don't want to see, which is important. Uh, I'll sh I gotta show you that in a little bit. Um, we're just gonna hide. Oop. Control Z that. Oh, what happened? There we go. I'm gonna hide this and show you kind of the layout of what we're actually working with here. Now, right here, we just have our button, and our button is gonna be button X, button Y. So that's our position, and then our height width ratio times its actual width and height. And then we're just going to stretch to fill. Pretty simple. And then down here, this is just the box to the right displaying the items. And then the whatever item, the name of the item that you have selected. Pretty simple. Not going to go into that. So now that I uh, hit this overlay, you actually see how this works. You can see it's just a list. And then we have that overlay hiding all the ones you don't want to see. So I'll just put that back into play. So that's what that says. Now this, this for loop, what it does is it for, it declares i is 0, and then it'll go until it reaches items.length, which is the length of the array of items that you have. So in my case it's 30, so in this it would be, it would stop at 29, which uh, in arrays 0 is the first number, and 29 would be the last in my case since it's 30 long, which is perfect. Now down here, we have our draw texture, which is just drawing that background uh, in position item X and then item Y. And then we're plusing for every I it is, we're timesing it by 33 times the height ratio. So what this means is say it's the fifth button, it's going to be 5 times 33. So it'll move it 5, or it'll move it uh, 15, what is that, 165 down. And that's how we get that array of strings, which is pretty nice. And then right here, we're just making the button, which is the same thing, except for instead of having a texture, we're going to have a button with words. And then we have a style going on here, that item wording. And then if you do click it, you're going to make selected equal to uh, the, whatever the button's ID is. So I. Okay. Now we got that covered. We are going to talk about scrolling. Now, I probably could have made this a lot simpler. But it works, and it's pretty uh, it's pretty simple. So if you click the first frame that the button, uh, the user clicks the button down, input that get button down, zero. If it is in range of the texture, I'm sure there's another way of doing this. This is just how I normally do it. So if, uh, if the button's position is between, is on the button's image, which is all these. Uh, it might be different for your button if it's different sizes. Pretty much it's just uh, button and then button time plus the width of it. And then for height, um, one thing to note, this input, that mouse position, this is 0, 0, this bottom left-hand corner if you see where my mouse is. But for the GUI systems, this up here, upper left, is 0, 0. So you just got to do screen height minus button Y, button Y times the height, or whatever, or minus the Y. And if you do click it and all that's true, it means you are moving the button. Your old Y is going to be where you clicked initially, and your old button is where the button used to be. Now I'll minimize that. Now this input.get button, nothing else, is mean it'll return true every frame after you push the button down. So if you're holding it, it'll return true. And then if you're moving it, your button Y will equal your old button, which is where the button started plus the old Y, which is where you clicked, minus where your mouse is currently. And then these are simply button locks. So, say, what, what this pretty much means is you can't take this and scroll it into infinity. It'll stop at 60. 
So if, so say once it should be zero, like where my butt, where my, where my mouse is, it can't. About that, my screen capture ended accidentally. Um, so there's a lock. So this lock would be 60, and this lock would be, uh, well, what did I have it? I had it 604. So it can't go below 604. So in your case, it might be different. And then I have the height ratio again, just to set it in place. So now, now when the user releases it, booing just equals false, and we're good to go. So that is how you're going to scroll your button. Now, how you scroll the items is you're going to find how long it is. So you got your items length. So this is going to be how much space that takes up. So items length, so that's how many items you have, times the height of every single button, which is 33 times the height ratio, minus how big your space is. So in my case, it's 590. So what that means is between this distance and this distance is 590 pixels. And then you just minus that. I have the height ratio there. Balances everything out for different screen resolutions. Now down here, simply we just take the item Y, which is the Y height of all the start of the item list, um, the starting spot of it, which is going to be the same up here, minus, so it's going to be going up, minus the item's length, right here, this item's length, times a ratio of, right here, this is how much the button has scrolled. So in my case, it scrolls 604 minus 60. So I did that because if the button started up here, it would be 0 divided by how far it goes down. But mine starts 60 down, so I have to minus it by 60 so I get a 0 number. So when it's in this default position, it's returning a 0 value, not a 60 value. And down here, it'll be 600 and whatever minus 60 to get our max value. And then we just get a ratio of that times it by how long it has to scroll. And then you minus it by the starting position, and voila, you just scrolled some items. So that's how I did it. There's, I'm sure there's other ways of doing it, but this is how I chose to do it. So it's pretty cool. Hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. I uh, hope you like, subscribe, check out some of my other videos, and uh, thanks for watching.